Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good day and welcome to the show. Today is <clears throat> Tuesday, the 5th of May, 2020. And uh, you know what? Let's get started. Let's open up the charts right here and take a look at what's going on. You know, honestly, out there right now, uh, the pain from this, what's actually happened with the job losses of, they say 30 million have been recorded job losses. But actually, in, in reality, uh, a lot of it hasn't come in yet. I'm thinking it's more like, I mean, not, I'm, th I'm thinking it's more like about 50 million, maybe 60 million even. Now, you have to understand that for each one of those official job losses, there's people connected with that. So one person loses his job, and down the line, maybe several other people are affected by that person losing their job, you know. So when you extend that out, it's probably like 50 million people have lost their jobs. Uh, when you extend that out, you can probably count an extra person for each person that's lost their job. It's going to be affected by that person losing their job. And now I'm being kind of conservative, so at least probably 100 million Americans are going to be affected by job losses. I mean, drastically affected by job losses. And this is going to have a trickle-down effect later on in the in the summer as we work towards summer and fall. Uh, but for right now, we're living in a fool's paradise. Let's read a little bit of this article here. It says there's been no spike in personal and business bankruptcies, but the surge is expected. It's not going to be a surge. It's going to be a flood. It's coming, you know. It, it's just not here just yet. Uh, unreal world. <clears throat> it... These things, actions are being deferred. It says, why? It's partly because few businesses are putting pressure on customers to pay their debts. Lots of consumers are living in an unreal world where the money that they're making is not being demanded to pay debts they would normally have to pay. The question is, when will it all come crashing down? creditors out there it's kind of like the mass effect you know uh, sometimes if a, if a huge crowd of people does something that's illegal or against the law they can get, actually get away with it if there's like a hundred thousand people all doing it simultaneously what are you gonna do basically and that's what's happened here it's just, it's just like it's like 30 to 50 million people out there are suddenly don't have the money to pay their credit card bill, so the credit card companies are just kind of like zipping it. They're just kind of like not doing much about it just yet. But it's going to come a time, a couple months down the road, you know, where these credit card companies are going to go back to saying, hey, you know what, we want our money. And in fact, we want the back payments. We want <clears throat> the same thing it applies to renters, who who are getting behind in their rent, you know, and, and the landlords too, you know, they, they just, the whole thing, the effects that's happened, happened so suddenly, and we had a lot of momentum going in, a lot of forward momentum with the economy. The economy was perking along pretty good. It's kind of like a car, if you slam the brakes on real fast, the car doesn't immediately stop. And that's the way we got here. But the car will start to slow down very rapidly. And that's what's happening right now is we're feeling that effect of the economy is going to start to, in the next few months, slow down extremely rapidly. We're not quite, fe we're not quite there yet. We're not quite feeling the full effects of what's happening just yet. Uh, but it's coming. Uh, let's take a look at this article. Layoffs and corporate bankruptcies are spreading as U.S. workers found, uh, are facing mounting hardship. You know, I just heard this morning that Norwegian cruise lines are in trouble. They're having trouble, and that's that's a big, it's a big company, you know. Uh, what other company was going bankrupt, I just heard today. Uh, uh, anyway, there's a lot of corporate bankruptcies and stuff going to be happening simultaneously to personal and household bankruptcies, you know. Uh, U.S. clothing retailer, it says here, 
J. Crew filed for bankruptcy, and U.S. Steel and GE Aviation announced major job cuts as economic catastrophe engulfs U.S. workers. It's continuing to grow amidst a coronavirus pandemic, along with general meltdown of brick-and-mortar retail, manufacturing, health care, and public services all face deep cuts. Uh... It says, despite the push by Trump administration to abandon social distancing standards and reopen wide sections of the United States economy, the official U.S. COVID-19 death toll is holding steady at about 2,000. Well, you know, it's probably going to actually increase a little bit over the next month or two. I think we're actually moving toward the peak. Uh, I think the peak is probably about a month away. Uh, and in this whole thing... That's talking about the virus, but after the virus is gone or not, or it starts to actually recede, you know, kind of, it's kind of like a tide coming in and tide goes out, you know. Uh, what's going to happen then? Uh, are we going to get a pickup in the economy, or is that when we're going to start to really feel the effects of what just happened? And so they're looking for this V-shaped recovery. But I don't think we're going to see the recovery just yet. I think we're going to continue to descend into this deflation. And the central banks are going to have to try to support us through this. And you're going to see that this support from the central banks mostly makes its way to the core part of the system. So the money that they're pumping in there is going to mostly make it into the core part of the system, the big banks the two big to fail institutions and everything are going to receive all this money, you know, while at the same time, these smaller corporations, these smaller businesses and everything are going to start to really pile up failures. Uh, so we're looking at one part of the economy that's dying, and then the other part of the economy that's on life support and going to be kept running. And this is creating imbalances within the economy. So we're going to also see these imbalances reflected on things like uh, some things are going to go up in price, like food prices are, are going up, you know, where you're going to see other parts of the economy, like auto sales, are just falling down a, a cliff, you know. And uh, some things are going to go up within the real estate. You know, you're going to see cheaper and smaller and cheaper homes uh, the price on them is not going to fall so much, but then on, on really luxury real estate, you're going to see they can't find a buyer. There's no bid for luxury real estate. Uh, houses that are priced over a million dollars, there's going to be very few buyers out there right now in, in this particular global economic crisis. It's actually a depression. We're on the front side of an economic depression. And because of all the all the stimulus, this is not going to be a regular depression. This is going to be a hyperinflationary depression, uh, which is which is unlike the depression we had in the 1930s. You know, now let's get uh, started and look at what the what silver's doing today. It's at 14.90. It's up 15 cents on the day so far. Really, gold and silver haven't been moving much lately. They've been Staying within a very little narrow trading range of silver around fifteen dollars more or less, and gold at around seventeen hundred more or less. Seventeen oh two today for gold's down twenty cents. Let's take a look at cryptocurrency today. Two hundred forty-seven billion dollars for the industry. Sixty-six percent Bitcoin dominance. Now I'm seeing that Bitcoin dominance creep up. That's a bad sign that the Bitcoin price could turn downwards uh, whenever, whenever, that's one of my signals I look for in cryptocurrency is the Bitcoin dominance. When the Bitcoin dominance starts to fall, then we're looking for an increase probably in the price of Bitcoin. Uh, that's one of my biggest signals. That I, that's one of my signals. There's other signals I look for, but that's a big signal to me. In fact, that the Bitcoin dominance is climbing rather high right now. Uh, is not a good signal uh, for for cryptocurrency in general. Uh, we're looking at a price of 88.89 for Bitcoin today, and we're looking at a price of 206 dollars for Ethereum. Uh, 
Bitcoin Cash is at 243, Bitcoin SV is at 205, and Litecoin is at $46.80. Let's take a look at the Dow today. Considering that the amount, now, you know, back during the 2008 crisis, we saw Lehman Brothers fail. Big, big, you know. But if you take all these little small corporations and companies and businesses and you lump them all together, it makes something much bigger than Lehman Brothers. And that's coming in the immediate future, in the next number of months, uh, not even into summer, leading into summer and this fall. And I don't think it's going to really, we're really going to start to come out of this until probably uh, heading into next winter before we're going to start to come out of this. And I'm going to talk about what's going to happen then, you know, later, and maybe I'll do a show on it, what's going to happen when we actually start to come out of this. And we actually start to see a little bit of a recovery. I'm thinking probably around uh, September or October before we're going to start to see any sign of recovery, you know. But until then, between now and then, we're going to see this deflationary action continue and probably intensify by by the power of t of 10 you know okay let's take a look at crude oil today 2422 crude oil is getting kind of frothy right now considering considering they don't have any place to put it uh all the containers are full you know and the world is still not using very much crude oil crude oil at 24 dollars you know when you consider that just a few days ago it was selling for minus was it minus 37 or something like that? You know, it was down below zero, and now it's 24.22. And it's up $3.83 on the day so far. You know, so normally I would look at a crude oil price at 24.22, and I'd say, wow, that's really down. You know, it's really cheap right now. But under these circumstances we're under right now, I'm looking at that price at 24.22, and I'm thinking, hey, you know, it's kind of high. Consider it, you know, considering what's going on. Take a look at U.S. Treasuries today. And we're seeing rise in yields with the exception of the one year. But uh, we're looking at uh, three basis points on the U.S. 30 year, and it's sitting at 1.33, and the U.S. 10 year is at 0. 0.65. Let's take a look at the dollar index. 99.75 on the U.S. dollar index, and it's up... Uh, about a quarter of a penny. Uh, it's getting up near a hundred again, you know, on the U.S. dollar index. Listen, thank you guys for listening to this show. Give me a thumbs up. Going to continue to monitor the situation that's happening with the virus and all the stuff that's going, geopolitical events that's going on in the world right now. Uh, there's definitely uh, a negative feeling toward China right now that's going on, you know. And uh, China's worried. They put out a paper within the last, I guess, the last few days or whatever, warning that there could be conflict because of this negative uh, input and negative feelings toward China. Uh, they're worried. The Chinese are worried about that. Uh, anyway, listen, catch you guys in the next show. Give me a thumbs up and bye-bye, guys.